All right, over to you. Thank you. Okay, so we are continuing the subrepository discussion, which we had on, I think, Thursday. Yeah, well, it says here when the original slot was. And we talked a good deal about it. And I think we were down to like going over the questions of how, like, all the things that I could think of now, what might be hard or, and this one I can actually edit. So is that still visible if I open the split screen? Or, yeah. Yes, it is okay. visible for me at least. Fine. Then I will do that and maybe go through the questions again. So we've gone over the first one. We've gone over the second one actually where we talked about, so at least in the Debian case, um, I think users should not interact with the subrepositories directly. They should interact with the parent repository and then everything else happens below below the hood, which would mean implementation wise that you the, the subrepository class is something that works a lot like the current repository class in that it has repository versions with content in them that need to be saved. Uh, but it would not be something that wants to be exposed via the API. So I'm not sure how that would work implementation-wise, because I'm guessing that both, both aspects are already in the parent class, or am I wrong about that? Can I, like, subclass repository being, being version? In, huh? yeah, being in the API is a matter of the view. So um, I just leave the view and then that. You can have classes and we make the view not show them, I believe. Okay, that works then. Um, I have one here, how to handle orphan subrepositories. And so my current idea would be, at least in the Debian case, it just belongs to the parent repository. And if the parent repository is deleted, all the subrepositories are deleted. And that's the only way they ever get deleted. So or just can sub repositories be shared between the repositories? So that was the first point here. Can multiple parent repositories reference the okay. same repository? And I say so that like at least I don't know if there's a general case for other plugins where this makes sense, but I think in the Pulp Debian case, if we're gonna hide this whole thing from the user and say this is all our internal plumbing then it just makes the implementations, like it removes 99% of potential complexity to say, these are basically one big object and they get deleted together and they don't cool. share the sub repositories and then everything's simple. And I think okay. that's probably the way to go here. So, um, yeah. so let, let me ask you, how is the sub repository handled inside a repository version? And I believe there would need to be some content and that content would tell me this is the repository version that is served here. So I think that would be the easiest thing. Let me see if I can, at, yeah. At that point, I think it's even more complicated if the sub-repository was tied to the very repository. And it could even open up some use cases where you say, okay, I have this component in my repository A and I want the same component and I can just copy it over to repository B. Mm -hmm. At that uh, point, but, obviously, we would need some kind of orphan cleanup for sub-repositories. Yeah, so that's the thing I was worried about and was trying to avoid, but maybe... So, so like, the... I guess if it's content, then it's almost unavoidable. I can't, I can't forbid the same content being in two different parent repositories and thereby referencing the same sub-repository. Mm -hmm. So if the, really if the reference is a con subclass's content, then basically, actually, Matthias just said, basically, I automatically say yes. Multiple parent repositories can reference the same sub-repository, and then I need some kind of orphan cleanup. But maybe I, I will take that with me and think about it some more. Um, I yeah. don't know if you happen to stumble across, but in RPM plugin, we have a concept of sub repository. 
However, mm. I think we're not sharing the sub repos between parent repos. Okay, and that's the one for kickstarts. Okay. And there the 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 sub repository really is like an itself a repository that can also be published independently of the parent repository. Is that correct or um I don't think so. I don't I don't think so. Okay. It's user hidden and it's, as you say it's our internal plumbing okay so maybe i'm i should really go and look at pulp rpm and study that because it already exists there or at least in a version of it yeah in a version of it we already use it and we have had cases with race conditions of its deletion so okay it might be fun to implement this yeah um how much time do i still have because i think some questions are more important than others 10 minutes okay so i'm gonna skip some things maybe uh so one Im interesting one i do want to ask here is like what happens when a sync fails for one sub repository and the other sub repository has already saved a new version do i then have some like the, the sync says, okay, if, if not everything finishes, then I need to go back and delete that new version. You probably would need to roll back and completely delete the sub repo. Doesn't root repository version have like a completed flag? Maybe you could wait until the end to set completed on the repository version. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then just not save it if not all of them finish. Yeah, you'll save it, but then you won't set completed until all of them finish. Okay. Uh, Karen, you have more than 10 minutes because you haven't started at the top of the hour, so. Okay. But like, so the, the okay, maybe the one thing I really still want to talk about is just like, is there some alternative to this? Because I mean, the, the core problem of we, I record three times for every package where this package is in. That like, I think I need to solve this problem in the long run because it's just always gonna be a, a, a ceiling on performance if, if I don't change it. And so one possible solution is this sub repository idea. And the other, like, I think when Matthias like did the initial implementation, we may have considered this way, way back when and, and said, no, it's not a good idea. And I still kind of feel it's no, it's not a good idea, but I want to bring it up as an alternative. So instead of having the reference, I am in this component in the package release component model, which is a table with two foreign keys, uh, maybe the package model could just directly have a foreign key relation to I am a package in this component. And then you would duplicate packages that are in two components, but maybe that's okay because it's not the artifacts that are duplicated in just the package model. And my main argument against this is it just feels wrong. It's like we're not cutting nature at its joints, as, as they say, because there's nothing inherent about a Debian package that says I am in this component no matter what repository I'm in. Um, so but, the package can be, that specific package can be part of different components and the component can have multiple packages. Yeah. Right. So that's yeah. many to many relationship. So yeah, so the, like, so, so maybe that's just not an alternative at all. Because then I'm kind of stuck with then this sub repository approach, it might be difficult and there might be some fun things like race conditions and orphan cleanup and sharing objects between different parent repositories. But like, it feels a bit like it's the only solution for this, for the original problem of 
yeah, I, I have three database records to tell me a package is in this repository and in this component within the repository. And that just is a drag on the performance I can ever reach because like just comparing side by side with pulp RPM, if pulp RPM just has one record for each package to tell what that thing is in, then and pulp dep has three records, that's just never gonna gonna be able to compete. Is that right? Or does somebody else have any kind of alternative idea? So wait, where is the performance issue occurring? Sorry, I think I missed this. OK, if I go up. So basically, right now, what we have is we have a package release component content type, which doesn't have any artifacts. And it inherits from content, so it's it's content, and it's so it's basically just a database table with two foreign keys. And what this database table says is, this package that I reference is in this component that I reference, and then the package, the component, and the package release component all go in the same apt repository version in pulp dev. And what I'm re so instead of recording for like if if we didn't have some if all the apt repositories was flat I would just have the package content is in this repository version and pulp core would re record that for me in the repository content table, but instead of that I have this package is in this repository version and this package release component is in this repository version. And the package release component records that this package is in this component. So I have three records that basically kind of duplicate the information of what grouping is this package in. So I have sort of three records instead of one. And because like Debian, lots of components have like 50,000, so the standard Debian and Ubuntu repos in their main component, they have 50,000 packages. And having that extra 50,000 uh, package release components you have to create and query, and the extra 50,000 like these records in the database is just a drag on overall sync time. Yeah, and I like and and it's a fundamental problem. Like I can never get rid of that cost unless I find some way to 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 have the to have the like or so. My currently my only idea is the sub repository to get rid of this cost. Yeah, um, I think the elephant in the room is to kind of duplicate the concept of a repository now without versions. Where you say I have one content type that is just the basket of content, mm -hmm. as we stated yesterday. And if I mean, uh, if you use repository versions, there's still the question: How do you now uh, know which one is the version you need to base your next repository version you want to reference on? And if you just have the basket of content, then you have just another basket of almost the same content. And how would that new basket of content be efficiently created during the next sync? If it's not because right now he has a basket of content with this table, and each time yeah. he has to create this whole basket base something like that yeah so what if you yeah, but, but now, go ahead. yeah but but now this is a join table it's not a joint um, table it's just what i'm trying to understand it's a subclass <laughs> of content yes like it's, it's a repository version scope join table yeah so matthias you have knowledge of container plugin and debian plugin how this package release component is different from the relation through table we have between blob and manifest. 
why it needs to be a subclass of content and not just a regular fruit table. Yeah. I mean, Can that I be, because yeah. in the next version, the package may have moved from one component to the other. Yeah. So what if you had sub repositories, you generated the repository version, and then the parent um, repository, you had like releases, and that pointed to, or release components, I guess, and that pointed to the repository version of the sub repository. I think that's the current idea I have. So we already have, so a package release component points at a release component and at a package. And there's only one, there's only a couple of, a handful of components per repository or release components. And then that one can go in the parent repository and reference a sub repository version and say, I am this sub repository basically. So that this sub repository like, version, yeah. Yeah, so that seems like a good solution because that gets rid of PRCs, right? Yeah, that that eliminates the need for PRCs. And, and that's the whole point of this discussion to get rid of the content that is just ordering content or sorting content or joining content. That, content. That's maybe a difference. A tag or a manifest is itself content that then references other content. And while a manifest knows all the blobs that belong to it, and they can never change, these release components can change from version to version because packages are added and removed. It's more like a repository in the end. Yeah. Yeah, but that will be a different release component with new identifier, like new digest, no? Well, if something changed, you make a new repository version and you, you reference that version with, and reference that version. But you reference, but you create one content to reference a repository version containing a thousand packages instead of creating a thousand package release components. Yeah, and if the release component its packages don't change, then you can just leave it. You don't have to regenerate the metadata, which seems nice. Exactly. If, if, if yeah. the component completely is unchanged, no packages added, no packages removed, then maybe a third of your whole repository stays the same and the metadata even stays the same. Yeah. And yeah. I so really like, hope that you do this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I like, I think this idea does in theory work i i just don't know like how hard it will be to to get there and like how many stumbling blocks will crop up and and like then there's a question of does one migrate all existing content into this new repository or does yeah. one keep it for existing content and just add it for new versions yeah there's it's okay. it seems like pulp that 4.0 a bit there's only one way to find out. <laughs> yeah, try. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let, let me let me just uh, sum up. The whole idea came up because the the Debian repository structure already does something that Pulp does different, and namely having multiple sets of content in this in one repository, where Pulp is like. One repository is like one homogeneous yeah. set of content. Yeah. So this solution is actually quite similar to the Pulp RPM solution because they have a repository which has a distribution or kickstart, and that kickstart has a reposit a sub repository. So I'm not saying that Pulp RPM has a good solution or what have you. So maybe I don't, know, don't follow it, but it does sound but, similar from what I remember. I mean, so one takeaway or one thing I'm taking away from everything that people have said is I should at least look at this pulp RPM solution for the in great detail and then maybe look into the git blame who who has worked on this the most and and maybe try to talk to them as I start working on this for pulp dep if if I get to it. Yeah, don't look at the git blame because I think I actually worked on it so okay but yeah um 
sub repository in um, the RPM plugin, though, uh, it, it can be a subset, um, but it could also be a completely different um, set of content uh, unrelated to the uh, the main repo. So it's not um, it's not it's definitely not a strict subset, and uh, basically we treat we kind of treat sub repos as being independent in some sense because of that. So it's not independent from the user's point of view, but like from how you conceptualize it, the implementation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I would, so for me, that's that's different. So for this up case, I think I would say it's basically totally dependent on, on like, it, on existing within or of being part of a parent repository. So the idea is that the packages aren't in the parent repository version at all. A parent repository is basically just a, it contains a handful of contents, namely the release file and the other package release components of which you only have a handful per up repository. And then all the packages are all in sub repositories. Uh, yeah. Yes. So it is. It is a little bit different. But yeah, I think. I mean, I'm also like from what we're discussing internally at Atix, uh, like the focus has moved to improving performance and sync time performance, and I think this is based. So, so what my my takeaway right now is, this is the only way to to really like to to solve this fundamental problem of having the three records instead of one per package to tell what that package belongs in one grouping uh so i probably want to pursue it and i think that's good enough for today uh i have no idea when i will get the time and and how hard it will be and but we'll see I think I do want to try at some point. OK, I'm going to go back here and stop the sharing. All right, thank you. And I'll stop the recording.